Hi everybody, TechSphere here, and today we're taking a look at the brand new iPad Air M3, going over tips and tricks, the best accessories, some ways to save money, and how to best customize your new iPad. So we're gonna start with some basic things, a hardware and software tour, and then we'll get into more advanced features and accessories as we go. So let's get started with a tour of the hardware. You can see on the back of the iPad, you have a couple of things. You have your 12 megapixel camera, as well as a microphone there of course your Apple logo, and then you have some smart pin connectors if you're going to connect this with a device such as Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is a really good keyboard. It is pretty pricey, but it is super solid. Now on the top of the device, you can see your volume buttons. Now in olden days, these volume buttons would always be top and bottom. Now in the olden days, these volume buttons would always be the same no matter which way your device is turned. But in recent years, Apple has changed this, which I don't actually like. So if the device is vertical, whether it's upside down or right side up, the top button will be up. Whereas if your device is horizontal, the right button will be up and the left button will be down. So it changes depending on how you shift your iPad, which I don't like, but you get used to it. And up top, you can see a magnet that can be used for attaching your Apple Pencil Pro second generation or your Apple Pencil USB-C to this device if you want. And we'll go over some of the Apple Pencil tips later. Up top is your power button, which you can hold to activate Siri. And you can see the new Siri animation there. And then of course, locking and unlocking your device and then using the Touch ID sensor. And at the bottom is my favorite feature of these newer iPads of the past few years is USB type C. Now this is really powerful because it allows you to do several things. For one, you can charge other devices from it. So for instance, I have a USB C to Apple watch charger here. And so if I connect my Apple watch, it'll start charging it. Now I can do the same thing for other watches such as, you know, a Garmin watch. I can charge my iPhone from it. I could charge my beats from it. I could even power small USB devices, such as a little USB fan. There's a lot of things you can do with this. You can also connect it to things such as an SSD. So this is four terabytes, 4,000 gigabytes that I can connect to my iPad via USB-C. You can also connect a monitor to it. You can connect different microphones. There's lots of accessories that you can connect with the USB-C port on your iPad. So that's really great. Now this iPad is now technically a horizontal iPad since they've moved the front facing camera to the top of the horizontal side, as you can see there, which is nice for when you're doing Zoom calls or FaceTimes, it's now like a laptop and it's designed to be held more so in horizontal landscape, but of course vertical is also a very common way to use your iPad. Now quickly I wanna talk about that front facing camera because there is a feature called center stage, which you might like, but I actually don't like. So I'll hop into a fake Zoom meeting here so by default, if you're in a meeting, it's going to use center stage, which means it will follow you around the shot, which might not be ideal if you don't want people to see around your room as you move around. So if you wanna turn that feature off, you can go into control center, tap the controls, and then turn off center stage, which will keep your camera at a fixed position. Now you can also turn on portrait mode, which will blur out the background, and studio light, which will just add some nice lighting to your face. You also will probably want to turn off reactions because by default, when you have reactions turned on and you do something like a thumbs up, it'll add a little thumbs up to your screen as well as a thumbs down, a heart emoji, and, and other things like this. So probably not something you'd want in a business meeting. Uh, it's fun on FaceTime, but not great for a business Zoom call. So you can turn that off using those controls. Now quickly, a few gestures and a few ways to customize your iPad. So you can tap to unlock your iPad and you can swipe up if you wanna put it in your passcode or you can use Touch ID to get right into your iPad. If you wanna get into Control Center, you swipe down from the top right-hand corner. If you wanna get into Notification Center, you slide down from the middle. When you're on your home screen, you can swipe back and forth between your pages. If you swipe to the right, you'll get a kind of preview window, which will give you some different options that you can customize here. You can always swipe up to see your recent applications, and then you can go into one. So I'll click on Safari here. I can go back and then say, click on Zoom. And you can swipe back and forth between your recent applications using the bar at the bottom of your iPad, and then you can swipe up to go home. Now, if you swipe up and hold, you're gonna get your recent applications. Now, there's a few ways of doing multitasking on the iPad, which is really handy. 
One way is to drag one application on top of another, and you can see that little split screen window, and it'll create a split screen for you. Another way, if you're in an application, is to swipe up to see your dock, and then you can drag up an application if it does support split screen, and you can drag it on either side. And once it's up, you can drag from left to right to resize. Then you can full screen one app or full screen the other app. And some apps even support a nice side window. So say I'll pull up YouTube here and I'll kind of just leave it hovering on the right side of the device. And now I have YouTube here. Well, I can still use this application and I can move this app to either side. Now some quick customization tips. So Control Center is now highly customizable. By default, Apple gives you three different pages in Control Center. You have your home, you have a music toggle, and then you have your connections toggle. I don't really ever swipe through these pages. In fact, I don't think I have once swiped between them because all of those same functions can be accessed from this main window. You have your connectivity options, you have your media here, which you can tap to expand. You have your brightness volume, you have your focus mode, so do not disturb and things live in here. And then you can now customize and add other things by clicking the little plus button or tapping and holding. And you can click add a control. And here you can add really whatever you want. So screen recording is pretty popular. Low power mode is not a bad option either. Voice memos is now a lot better on the iPad, so you can add that as well. Now for any of these, if you want to make them bigger or include the text, and this is a little bit of a finicky feature, because it's kind of hard to grab the corner, but you can drag out and you can expand it so that it includes the text as well. So there you can customize that to add anything you want. And you might want to scroll through these and just see some of those features. Now, if you tap and hold on your home screen, you can customize it in a few ways. If you click edit and you click customize, you have the ability to make your apps small or large. And making it large will actually get rid of the text underneath the applications. You also have the ability to darken your wallpaper, which just adds a little bit more contrast, which for some wallpapers is nice. You can also have it in light mode and dark mode, which will dark tint all your applications. You can have it automatic, or you can choose your own color tint. I typically just leave it with light. Now you can also add widgets by clicking this add widget button. And from there you have a bunch of different widgets that you can add to your home screen. Now I'm gonna do a weather widget because that is a classic. So I'll click weather. And let's say I want this one, and I will add this to my home screen. And I don't want this smart stack here because I don't like it rotating through. So I'm going to go ahead and click and click remove. And I'll drag this up. I also don't want this clock widget, so I'll go ahead and remove that. Then I would also like a weather widget with just the sunrise and sunset times. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the end. And I'm going to tap and hold and drag this there. And then you can see the sunrise is at 6.59 and the sunset is 7 p.m. Finally getting longer days, which is awesome. Now, if you want to customize your wallpaper, you can go into settings and go down to wallpaper right here. But then another easy way is tapping and holding in your lock screen. And this gives you the option to customize your various wallpapers. So I'll create this one and I'll click customize. And you can choose whether you want to customize the lock screen or the home screen. And now you have the ability to add some widgets, so I'll just add a few widgets there. And I'll click Done. And if you rotate it to Landscape, it'll give you more options for more widgets. I'll go ahead and rotate this back. And click Done. And you can also customize the home screen. You can choose to blur the background or not. So I like to blur the background, so I'll do that. I'll click Done. And then I have this wallpaper set, but I can choose other ones as well. And this is nice because you can have these set for certain focus modes. So say you want this to be when Do Not Disturb is on, or say maybe work one. So if you want to have a certain wallpaper with certain widgets for work versus leisure, whatever, you can do that. You can always add new ones and customize it however you want. Okay, now let's talk about some Apple intelligence features, which if I'm going to be honest, are a little bit underwhelming, but we're going to talk about them nonetheless, because you might find them interesting. So the first thing is to make sure that Apple Intelligence is turned on. So you can go into Apple Intelligence and Siri, and then go ahead and turn it on. Now, ChatGPT is, of course, a big extension. So if you can go in there, you can enable it. You can sign in if you want to, but you actually don't have to. And then you can have the app if you want, but again, you don't have to. I like having the app, and I typically do have it signed in. I just haven't yet on this device. 
Now, as I mentioned before, if you hold the power button, this will activate Siri. But now there's also a new way of doing it by double tapping the bar at the bottom. And this will actually allow you to type something in Siri. Maybe if you're in public or you just want to get something more specific, you could say set alarm for five minutes. And I'll send it in and we have a five minute timer going. Now, another cool thing you can do is hold Siri and actually ask ChatGPT to analyze your page. So say you have an image like I do here. What is on this page? And it's going to ask me if I want to send this to ChatGPT and upload the screenshot. I'm going to say, yes, send this to ChatGPT. And here you can see it correctly identifies this as a Joshua tree. Now, writing tools, but you can see this little icon up here. It kind of looks like an atom or a nucleus or something like that it is one of the prevalent features of Apple intelligence. And you can pretty much tap that and use it no matter what application you're in. If you're searching for something in YouTube or you're in the notes app or mail or messages, pretty much anywhere that you can type or highlight text, you can use writing tools. So one thing you can do is compose, which will use ChatGPT. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write me an essay about the history of the light bulb. And I'll click send. And here you see we now have a little essay of the history of the light bulb. Now from there, I can do a few things. So one thing I can actually do is add to playground. So this is Apple's kind of funky new image creation AI. So this is going to take some keywords from this document and come up with a unique AI image. And I'm going to say, yeah. So you can see a few options here. I like this one. I'm going to click done. And then this is going to add a fun little image to my document. Now I'm going to go back up to writing tools and I want it to be rewritten in a funny way, rewrite this with a comedic tone. I'll send this, it's gonna take a second and it's gonna to try to do a funny tone. Ah, the light bulb, that magical orb that finally lets us see what we were doing in the dark. Now you can see some weird things such as these font sizes don't match and there's just some funkiness in this, but you can see that that feature is there nonetheless. Now let's do it again. Let's do summary. It's gonna make a summary of this whole document. Okay, here we go. We can copy it. We can replace all of this with the summary or we can share it. Or you could have it just list the key points, turn all of this into a list, or if it had the proper data, you could turn it into a table. You also have the ability to quickly proofread it for any errors and then rewrite it as friendly, professional, or just make it more concise while keeping the same tone. So you can see those basic features and how that might be useful for you, or maybe it won't be useful just depending on who you are. Now, as I mentioned, you can do this pretty much anywhere that there is text. So say I highlight this text here, I'll go to writing tools, and then I'll do summary, but I can also just make a little table. So let's just see what this does with a table. And you can see it's made a little table with the feature, and then the description. So this kind of works. You can see that this is basically a table of the new features of the iPad based off Apple's data. Now, another cool feature of the iPad is the ability to copy the subject in images. So say I tap and hold on this, I can click copy subject. Let's just go back to that note that we are working on and we'll scroll to the bottom and I can paste that there without the background. As you can see, it's imperfect. This is kind of a choppy image to begin with, but if you get a better image, you can copy the subject and just paste it without the background, which is pretty handy. Also notes is the ability to attach just a whole lot of things. You can scan text and then have it paste right in. You can scan documents and put full pages there. You can just add photos and videos straight into the document. You can do the image playground that we showed before, which allows you to just generate images. And now there's a really nice record audio function. And the nice feature about this is that voice memos now has a variety of tools, including transcription, which allows you to search through your voice memos, which is really great for business meetings, for lectures, brainstorming, voiceovers, interviews, stuff like that. So if I go into voice memos, you can see here I have a voiceover I recorded a couple years ago. Now, if I go into it and I click the transcript button, I click the transcript button, we have the entire transcript that I can search through which is just super handy. And that's a really nice feature. And that now integrates right into your notes and kind of swipe down and you can see this is a live recording going on as we're doing this. So that's just a really handy feature. You can pause 
and resume. This is still pretty different than something like Notability that actually will allow you to retrace your handwriting based off of the voice memo, but it's nice. Now I want to talk about a couple features that I just really like in Safari. So one would be the reader function. So say you have an article that you want to read, but maybe there's a couple ads in it or it's just a little clunky. The Verge is typically not too bad with that actually. But if you tap and hold up top, it'll give you a really nice reader mode, which will just be an ideal way to read that. It will now also give you the ability to summarize that article into just a few sentences. And my favorite feature is that it allows you to actually listen to the page with a really nice kind of AI Siri. Is a little less light, but a lot more useful. And you can see you can change the playback speed and you can see the controls just as if it was music or a podcast and you can jump forward and back. So that's a really handy feature if you're someone who likes to read a lot of articles. Okay, next I wanna talk about Apple Pencil support. This is a regular pencil, but these are Apple Pencil and Apple Pencil alternatives and different stylus options. So this does now support the expensive but very nice Apple Pencil second generation with several new features and it's a really solid option. You can also get the cheaper Apple Pencil USB-C, which lacks some of the features, but it's still really solid. We're gonna get something like the Logitech Crayon, which is a really nice option. And is it definitely a bit cheaper? It can vary from anywhere from like $20 to $70, depending if you buy new or used. But I think it's proof you don't need to spend $130 on an Apple Pencil Pro. Now, as you can see, as I'm writing this, it is actually cleaning up my handwriting because I do have auto-refined handwriting turned on, which is pretty nice. So you can see a couple things that kind of space the words better together. And when you're using the Notes app on your iPad, you can actually just highlight your text, which is a, a really cool feature. So it just highlighted all my text. You can copy that as text. You can also straighten it out, which is pretty cool. And then if you didn't already have auto refine turned on, you could then refine it. So there's just some really handy features. And with all stylus options, if you want to scribble out a word, you can do that just like that. You can also tap and hold and move to space out your handwriting so that you can add other words and you can see it kind of clean that up real nicely. So that's a really powerful feature with the voice memos, with the image playground, with the writing tools and more. Notes is a really capable app these days. Now if you wanna go even cheaper, you can totally get something like this $20 stylus, which also works great. You can see totally works just fine. You can get them with USB-C charging. Some of them do have wireless charging. This one's supposed to. It's kind of hit or miss if it works, but you totally don't need to spend 130 bucks. You can spend something like $20 if you want just kind of the bare minimum uh, essential and it still is going to write just fine. So that is the iPad Air M3. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope this video is helpful for you. I'll leave links to everything I talked about in the description. And thanks so much for watching.